the Cardinals of the Living. Father Connolly is a priest of the Archdiocese of Washington, assigned to Mount Calvary Parish in the course of the era. He's studying for an advanced degree in church history, and this enables Father to give a very interesting portrait to us this afternoon of Pat and we're going to be in terms of the conference program to have a a view, an historical view, at a very important moment in church history, of the experience of someone who was in a position of authority, as Cardinal Boyle was, and how difficult that was. Let's welcome Bob. Uh, faction. 
And so I guess in a sense, between what I know from the archives and what he knows and what they have to say, um, we have something like the whole story. Um, to begin, just a few things about Cardinal Boyle himself. Now, looking at this audience, I would guess that a good number of you are old enough to remember him, uh, but then there are a good number of you who are not so uh, wise in years, and so uh, would not remember him. Um, Cardinal Boyle was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania in 1896 uh, of Irish immigrant parents. He was the only child. His father died at, uh, when Patrick was 10, working in the steel mills of Scranton. Uh, he was raised by his mother, who basically supported the two of them by being a housekeeper for the priest uh, at then at what was then called St. Thomas College. It's now known as the University of Scranton. Um, Patrick O'Boyle entered the seminary um, for the diocese, Archdiocese of New York, because at that time, believe it or not, they had so many priests in Scranton, they had no place for Patrick. And so he went off to New York, where he was accepted, he went to the seminary at Dunwoody, uh, and was ordained in May 1921. His first assignment was a parish called St. Columbus, which is in Manhattan on West 25th Street. <coughs> area which at the time was known as Hell's Kitchen. He held this position as an associate pastor for five years. Now this, this is important to remember because one of the things that was said often about him at the time of the controversy over Humana Vitae is he doesn't know what it means to be a parish priest. He's never hearing confessions. He doesn't know what these people are going through. And that's quite frankly false. The man who spent his first five years of his priesthood in a poverty stricken area of New York City he knew what it was like, he knew what those people were going through, and he also knew what it meant to be faithful. So uh, that is, it's, it's important to remember um, his experience as an associate pastor. Uh, there are some bishops in the church today who have much less experience than Cardinal Boyle did as a, as a priest in the parish, who were never uh, belittled in this way, and so it's important that uh, his experience be recognized. Uh, after five years as an associate pastor, um, he was recruited to be involved in charity drive work by the then uh, uh, Cardinal Hayes. He was so successful at it, um, he was held on in that position. He also studied at Fordham University for a few years in the 1930s in social work. Uh, in 1936, he became the director of a basically a, a children's home, not strictly speaking an orphanage, but a children's home in Staten Island, uh, which housed 1,100 people, uh, children. He was the director there for five years. Then, in 1941, became the assistant director of Catholic Charities for the Archdiocese of New York, which, as you might imagine, even then was a pretty big operation. In 1943, he was made director of War Relief Services for the National Catholic Welfare Conference, uh, which still exists today under the title of, um, um, I can never have the NCCB and the U.S. The big of those people down there. <laughs> Um, in 1945, after the conclusion of the war, he was made director of Catholic Charities in New York. Uh, finally, in 19, November 1947, he was named the first resident archbishop of Washington. It's the first occasion, I'm not sure if it's happened since then, of a priest being elevated from, from being a, a priest to being an archbishop without first being an archbishop, uh, excuse me, without first being a bishop. And so his talents, his abilities were recognized. In the spring of 1948, shortly after his arrival in uh, Washington, he began initiating the process of integrating the Catholic schools in the District of Columbia, which at that time uh, were segregated. Uh, this is one of the things that he's most remembered for, his courage in dealing with race relations within the Catholic Church and in within the wider community. Um, that process continued throughout the late 40s and early 50s, and keep in mind this is before uh, five years before the 1954 Supreme Court decision uh, declaring that school segregation was unconstitutional. So uh, he was one of the forerunners in integration uh, and was always respected for that. 